Hey everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at re-ranking and how we can use that to improve the performance of RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation for very little effort. If you've been building basic RAG applications like this one uh, and you have a lot of data, you might have run into problems where it struggles to fetch the correct sources, even though you're pretty sure the sources are there. This is actually quite a common problem. Today, we're going to address this by adding a re-ranking step to our RAG pipeline to boost the quality of our results. It's really simple to implement as well. It's really just a single API call. And I've seen research papers claim that this can improve your search accuracy by 10 to 30%. Uh, but we're going to try it on our own pipeline here today as well to see if it really works. First, I'll show you how re-ranking works under the hood. Then, we'll add it to an existing RAG pipeline using Cohere's re-ranking API, and we'll finish up by testing it and seeing if it improved our results. Now, this video is intended for someone who is already familiar with RAG, but if you need a refresher, then check out some of my previous videos that I've made on this topic. And here, we'll also be building on top of a simple RAG pipeline application that we built in one of my previous videos. The links to all of this will be in the description below. Let's get started. Before we get into re-ranking, let's first take a look at our existing RAG pipeline infrastructure. We have a pretty standard setup here. Documents get processed by an indexer module, which splits them into chunks and then stores them in a vector database with embeddings. When a query comes in, we use a retriever to find the relevant chunks by comparing the embedding values of the query and the original chunk. Uh, and then a response generator uses those chunks as context for an LLM to create the final answer. Now, the problem really is in this retrieval step. By comparing the um, embedding distance of the query and uh, the different chunks, we don't really get the best results. So we end up having to fetch a lot of different results and hope that the comparison gets us most of the right results. This means we usually end up with a mix of highly relevant and somewhat relevant chunks. And the problem is that LLMs have limited context windows and can get confused when you give it too much information. So we want to only give it a few documents. The problem is what if the one that we actually want is outside of this number of documents that we choose as our cutoff point. For example, if we choose three documents, um, it might turn out that the fifth or the sixth one is the one we actually want. This is where re-ranking comes in. It basically helps you sort out this pile of information to what is most relevant to the query itself. Instead, this is how the process could look with re-ranking. So the first step is that we still fetch a lot of matching documents, more than the number that we intend to return to the LLM. And for this, we still use um, vector embedding distance as a way to find that initial set of documents. Now, once we have this smaller set of documents, we could use re-ranking. And re-ranking is a little bit more expensive, which is why we don't use it across the whole data set. And this is just a very, very simple um, three-step explanation of how it works. So in the first step, we use the distance function to still fetch a bunch of different documents. And we're going to fetch more than we intend to return to the LLM. So for example, if we wanted to return just three documents to the LLM, we might choose to fetch 10 or 15 at this initial step. In the second step, we use our re-ranking algorithm. So out of these initial documents, we will actually find a better ordering for them according to what's most relevant to the query. And I'll show you how that works later. But finally, once we have this ordering, we can pick the three or whatever number of the top relevant documents from the initial set. So we basically get higher quality results and have a higher chance to get the document that we really, really need. And the way we're going to do that is that we're just going to add an additional re-ranking step to our pipeline. And you can think of it mostly just as another step within the retrieval process. Now, to understand why and how re-ranking works, let's first take a look at the problem with traditional vector search in a little bit more detail. With traditional vector search, your document gets split into little text chunks, and then each of those chunks gets turned into embeddings ahead of time, just like in this diagram here. And when you make a query, that query also gets turned into an embedding. Then we just compare embeddings using similarity to find matches. The problem here is that the document embeddings are created without any knowledge of what the user might ask. So the embeddings tend to be a little bit general. Here's a concrete example. Let's say you have a document about Python coding concepts and another about Python snake habitats. If someone asks, how do I install Python? Then traditional vector search might rank both of these highly because they both contain the word Python. But obviously, only the coding document is actually relevant to that query. This is where re-ranking is supposed to help. 
instead of relying on pre-computed embeddings, a re-ranker can look at the actual query text and the actual document text together and make a much smarter decision about relevance. So how does re-ranking do that under the hood? Well, it uses something called cross-encoding. To explain it in a very simplified way, it basically combines the query and the source text first before processing it with a transformer. This is different to traditional rag vector search, which processes the query and the text separately, and then uses a distance function to compare those results. The re-ranking approach actually lets the system pick up on subtle cues, like whether the query is asking about a technical process or general information, or if the user wants recent data versus historical context. And when the query has multiple possible interpretations, uh, it tries to figure out which one makes the most sense. Now the trade-off is that this approach is much slower than traditional vector search because it has to process each query document pair individually. You can't pre-compute anything, every evaluation happens at runtime. To work around this limitation, we could use a two-staged approach. Um, for example, let's say that we have 10,000 documents in our database. We can first start by using vector search, which is much faster, to get maybe the top 100 candidate documents. And then we can use the slower but more accurate re-ranker to pick the top 10 most relevant ones. And those are the ones that we'll send to the LLM. Now, in reality, LLM context windows these days are really, really huge. You could probably fit in your entire document database. Um, we're talking context windows of 100K to a million tokens are now pretty much the norm, and it will probably continue to grow in the future. So before you try any of this stuff, you could see if you could just pass in all of your documents in the database and see if it actually gets you your answer. However, re-ranking might still be effective if you are constrained, like you have a lot of other contexts you want to use, or if you just want to optimize and use fewer tokens when you invoke your LLM. Okay, now let's look at a practical example of how we can add this to an existing RAG pipeline. For this, I'm going to use the simple RAG pipeline project that I've built, which you can find on GitHub. I also have a separate video covering this in more detail if you want to walk through how it was built. Now, all of the individual components of this pipeline are implemented as a separate Python class. This is all hooked up in this rag pipeline class here as well. So you could see all of these components being added and connected together. Now, the great thing about this project is that it's designed with modular components. So adding re-ranking is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is update the retriever component. So let's take a look at our current retriever implementation. And as you can see, this is pretty basic. It just delegates to our database's search method, and it does that to find the top five most similar chunks to the queries embedding. But now we can make this a little bit smarter by adding re-ranking. And here's our upgraded version. So now we're following the two-stage approach I mentioned before. First, we retrieve more documents than we actually need. In this case, three times as many. So if our top K is five, we're actually gonna fetch 15 documents from our database. This will give the re-ranker more candidates to choose from. Then we will pass those results to a re-ranking method that will select the most relevant ones. Now we haven't implemented this re-ranking function yet, so let's go ahead and do that next. For the actual re-ranking, we're gonna use Cohere's re-ranking API. Cohere has some really effective re-ranking models and their API is also really easy to use. You'll first have to go to their website and then get an API key. Next, you'll also need to install the Cohere library into your Python environment. Here's the command to do that using pip. And when you are here in the dashboard creating an API key, just note that you can create production keys or trial keys. So if you want to try for free, then create a trial key. Now back to our project, this is how we can implement the re-ranking. Uh, let's walk through what's happening here. First, we create a Cohere client and then call their re-rank API. We pass in the user's query and all the document chunks that we've retrieved and specify how many top results we want back. Cohere's model will analyze each document in the context of this specific query and then returns a ranked list. The response includes the indices of the original document ranked by the relevance score. Once you have your API key, set it up in your environment variable so that your Cohere library can pick it up. Here's what an output from this process would actually look like. So here we have a bunch of re-ranked indices, seven, two, 15, zero, and 12. This means that out of the 15 original documents that we looked at, these indices are the top five most relevant in this order. So here, 
document number seven in our original set would actually be the top relevant document, followed by document two, 15, zero, and 12 in that order. So now we have a smaller set of more relevant documents that we can use for the next step in our RAG pipeline. Now let's actually see this in action. In our RAG pipeline application, we actually have built-in evaluation tools so that we can easily measure improvements. I've also added a flag so that we can run the same evaluation with re-ranking and without it really easily. Now in this project, I've already run the command to chunk and embed my documents. So my database is ready to go. Let's run the evaluation first. Uh, without the re-ranking flag enabled. And just to remind you how uh, the evaluation works in this application, we have a sample question set of 30 pairs of questions and answers uh, that is based on some of these original document PDFs here. So this has all been chunked and embedded for us in our vector database. And now we're testing to see whether our system can find the right answer to these questions. And so without re-ranking enabled, we could see that the total score is 24 out of 30. And if we scroll up to see how it's actually done this work, uh, we could see that during the retrieval process, it just takes the top five results that it finds based on each query. So now let's clear that out and run it again, this time with the re-ranking flag enabled. And just to show you inside the code, uh, this re-ranking flag here is basically just uh, a Boolean that is passed to our search function. If it's turned on, then what we do is we triple our search results using vector search, and then we re-rank them and return the top K. Uh, if it's not turned on, we just return the top K from the vector search itself. So let's go back to the terminal and run this. And here is the result. We now score 27 out of 30. So with re-ranking, we were able to get a slight bump in the results. It's still not perfect, but it was a pretty easy improvement. And if we scroll up into the log, we could also see that uh, the re-ranking is actually working as intended. So here it's re-ranking the indices, uh, which is not the same as the original order that vector search would have found them in. In this example, because we only want to return five results, uh, with traditional vector search, we would have missed out on documents six and nine. It's not gonna change the world, but most of the time you want as many improvements as you can get. Um, I'm gonna have to be honest with you as well. I did have to edit my Q&A sample set a little bit just to have the type of questions that re-ranking would really help to improve. And likewise, in a real world use case, I think re-ranking would definitely have a bigger effect in some data set than others. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, context windows have become so big for LLMs these days that you might not even need re-ranking at all. You might just be able to put everything into that context window and then get the result that you want. So it's up to you whether this is a technique that you want to implement. And if you did want to implement this, then here's a couple of trade-offs you have to be aware of. Every re-ranking call is an additional API request, and that will have some overhead. Uh, you might see response times increase from a few hundred milliseconds to one to two seconds. Second, there's cost. Re-ranking APIs will charge per request, so you need to factor that into your economics. Uh, the good news is that the cost is usually quite cheap and likely to get cheaper over time. And third, there's the dependency on an external service. So in this project, we're now relying on Cohere's API availability. For production systems, you might want to implement some graceful fallback. For most RAG applications though, the accuracy improvement is worth the trade-off. Your users probably prefer getting the right answer in two seconds than getting a wrong answer in half a second. Now we went through this pretty quickly. So if you want to dive deeper into the code, then do check out this GitHub link in the description where you can find the full project. The key takeaway here is that re-ranking is one of the most effective ways to slightly improve your RAG accuracy with relatively little engineering effort. Again, you will have to trade it off whether it's worth implementing at all or whether you can get away with just throwing all of your documents into that context window. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the description. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next one.